Welcome back to Swiss Watch Expo in our new place here in Buckhead. As you can see behind us, we've got some beautiful new decor in the new store, so we hope to heat see you very soon. And now uh, I want to introduce you to Breguet. Speaking of things that are beautiful, one of the watches that I find to be the most intricate and detailed watch in the watch world. Breguet has a super long history, a lot of patents and a lot of unique innovations that they've incorporated into each one of their watches. So when you look at them, you're seeing details that you may not find on a lot of other pieces. And speaking of detail, when you see the Breguet Thin, the ultra slim model of this watch, there are a few little details right around the 11 marker on the dial. One of the things that you don't see and is commonly known in Cartier, for example, in the seven, you'll find the little Cartier symbol written in the Roman numeral. In the Breguet, you have to get a loop, but even with the naked eye, when you turn the, the dial just a little bit, just past the 11 and just past the 12, the scroll of the written Breguet is inscribed into the chapter ring on the dial. Just a few little things to detect whether or not the watch you're looking at is an accurate or real Breguet. These are just small things that they did at Breguet dating all the way back to the 1800s to ensure that fake copies of their watches wouldn't be distributed widely. They discovered that if they put little small hints to their brand in various areas of their watch, they weren't easily duplicated. And because these are hand engraved in the chaptering of the dial, it's very difficult. And so you don't find folks who make duplicates of these watches being able to do this level of detail. Another little interesting thing about Breguet history. Now, this is the Ultra Slim. This is an automatic watch. And what's interesting about this watch is not necessarily just the clean style, the coin edge of the watch that you find uh, on many of their Breguets, but also just the hands, the guilloche dial, the machine work that goes into this. This dial is actually a silvered gold dial. So the dial is made of gold, it's machined for the guilloche uh, design, but also it's silvered on top of that gold, which is very interesting. It's not just a brass plate or a bronze plate. So just a few little details. When you turn it over and you look, they even have the guilloche pattern in the weight the arbor weight to wind the watch with. It's extraordinarily thin. It's one of the thinnest movements in the world. It's absolutely gorgeous, but the size is a 38 millimeter as well. So it's a nice size, even for guys to wear. Um, this is a very traditional, classy uh, uh, dress style watch. Now, obviously I love the idea of a watch like this, but then I wanna move on to one other that's called the Marine. And the reason that this is my absolute favorite in the Breguet line is that it incorporates so many things about the marine lifestyle. Of course, watches from Breguet were used by sailors to navigate the world in the early days. So then, of course, technology came along. You got things like motors and propellers and things like that. All of those intricate details are incorporated into this watch. For example, when you look at the dial, you'll see the swirling pattern that's just in the center. And it evokes the idea of a propeller turning underwater. And you see that fan-like uh, uh, patterning in the, middle, the center of the dial. And obviously, it still has the coin edge as well. It even has the screws that go through the lugs that look like lugs or rivets which is very interesting. So there's a lot of little details in each and every Breguet that really fascinate me. One of the other things is just the way that the outside bezel ring is done to create the idea of, from the side, looking at a porthole on a ship. And then even things as small as when you look at the crown and the crown guard, you still get that idea of the propeller style because of the way that they're fanned out from each side, the crown guard that is. So a lot of little details in this watch that really make a, a difference to me in terms of what you expect from Breguet and a lot of other watch companies are not capable of achieving. And when you turn the watch over, you still get that same idea. And it's a little bit hard for me to detail here in the camera because of the, the clasp. This is a solid gold piece. The clasp is solid gold. The watch itself, the casing is solid gold and so is the weight internally. The weight internally also mimics and echoes 
the dial with that fanned pattern. So you still get the idea of the churning water and the churning blade. And I just find this watch to be one of the most fascinating. The great thing about buying it pre-owned here from Swiss Watch Expo is that the money that you save off the price new is absolutely incredible. And to have a gold watch that's this gorgeous and this classic, I don't think you can find a lot of brands that really can meet this. Now, of course, this is my personal opinion. Your opinion may differ. I just find that this watch is one of the most beautiful sport watches with a lot of really intrinsic history in it. So that is the Breguet Marine. Now, we're gonna go on to this watch, which is the Retrograde Seconds watch. Now, this watch is interesting because, and I have the tag got a little bit uh, caught in the clasp. What happens with the seconds is that the seconds hand goes across the dial and as it gets to the end, it snaps back and starts again. So you don't have a sub-second hand that goes in the traditional circular pattern, and you also don't have one that goes outside around the edge of the dial. You have this very simplistic two-hand uh, dial. You've got the retrograde seconds, which is just interesting to watch. It moves across the dial, gets to the end, flips back quickly, and starts again. Now, you would think when you look at this that it would lose time doing that because it seems like there's a lot of time that it takes for once the second hand gets to the end of the dial to flip back. It actually doesn't. It's that same second, so they account for that time in the reset. Also, when you look at the top of the dial, you have that power reserve that moves as you begin to wind the watch, and you can probably see that there. It's a really interesting dial. It's very simplistic, but again, it's that Breguet attention to detail that I just am fascinated by. Again, coin edge. You even have that sort of porthole design that's available on the Marine, even on this watch. Also, when you look at the lugs, they look a lot like the Marine too, even though this, this is not technically a Marine. So a lot of Breguet history in every single watch, and they consistently design their watches to keep a theme which is something that a lot of other brands do not do. Now, I do want to move on to the, other, the very last one that I have in this collection, and that is the, and if I'm, pardon me while I butcher this, the Reine de Nippel. <laughs> this is, I'm sure there's a lot of French people that have wanted to cut my head off at this point. Um, this is the Queen of Naples watch. Now, why is this important to Breguet? Well, this particular design, the egg design, and we've displayed this in a couple of other videos that we've done. The egg design was done uh, for Queen Murat of Naples, and she wanted a watch on her wrist. This is something that Marie Antoinette wanted as well. However, when the watch was designed for Marie Antoinette, as we all know, she didn't quite make it. And so she never received the first watch on her wrist, but the Queen of Naples did. So this is technically considered the first watch to ever have been worn on the wrist. And one of the things that I like to tell all of our customers and clients, when you ask about a watch and you say, hey, is this watch more of a ladies piece or is this more of a men's piece? Well, technically all wrist watches are women's pieces because women were the first ones and the very longest period of time to wear watches on their wrist before men ever transitioned. Men refused to wear wrist watches. They wanted to wear things in their pocket. The pocket watch made, had a lot of different design and they liked the boldness of it because of the way that they could customize them. So they didn't want to put them on their wrist. So just sort of as a side note in history, all women, all watches are women's watches. Men just wear them. So there's a lot of watch sizes that you can enjoy. For example, the 38 millimeter. The 38 millimeter can be enjoyed by a lot of different wrist sizes. And it, it can also, because women now are wearing larger watches, women can get away with the 38 millimeter too. So this particular watch is interesting because at the time that it was made, believe it or not, it was a very small watch. Because as you can imagine, the technology at that time for pocket watches was quite unique. They were larger, they were a lot more complicated. So when they went to a smaller piece, they had to re-engineer the way that they made a watch. They had to re-engineer the way that they manufactured all the components. And because of the way that the timekeeping is done, the springs and all of the things that regulate the timekeeping, 
had to have had to be really uh, improved. And Breguet did that. So this is referred to as the egg watch. We have it here. It's the Reine de Nibel. Uh, I butchered that again, I'm sure. And th again, this was made for the Queen of Naples. And one of the things that you will notice, the coin edge, keeping in theme with all of the other brands' uh, styles all throughout their lineup. This has a little bit of a domed crystal in it, so it does keep that sort of convex shape. And when you look at it from the side, it almost looks magnified at some point. It does have a mother of pearl dial. They come in multiple different styles. This just happens to be one of the most beautiful, in my opinion, with the diamond surround on the outside. And of course, the actual watch portion that tells time is very tiny just here in the lower portion of the dial. At first glance, it looks like a sub-second hand and dial. It's not. It just is proportioned correctly to read all throughout this oblong shape. Now, you find a lot of little details here, the diamonds that are in the crown, in the base of the watch, and just some other little fine points. Now, when you turn this watch upside down, you'll notice that this portion here where the strap attaches, it is different than on this side. And that's because in the early days when you thought about how you would display decorative eggs, jeweled eggs and that type of thing, they would actually sit like this on a stand. And so they incorporated that idea into it. Now there's a lot of other theories about why that exists and Brigade doesn't go into a lot of detailed information on that. So I'm just taking a little bit of portion of history from that. I may be wrong, but that's the most common theme that I've heard. So if you turn the watch over, you can actually see the details of the movement in the watch as well. It's got a display back. It's gorgeous, it's got a very small movement in the center. And this is how they were done in the original versions of these watches. They were very, very tiny. And Breguet even designed one of their watches where that movement was oblong in egg shape, just like the case. Of course, that was only one off. That was a custom piece. They never did that again. They just took a regular movement and centered it in the bottom portion of the oval. So very interesting and unique watch. This is currently for sale here at Swiss Watch Expo. One of the most gorgeous pieces that we have. I encourage you when you're looking at watches and you wanna branch out and you wanna have a bigger collection and you wanna get away from your standard traditional idea of what everybody in the mainstream buys as a watch, turn to the Breguet because the things that we have here are amazing. The prices that we have are an enormous savings over what you're gonna pay retail for a brand new watch. Do remember all of the watches that we sell here at Swiss Watch Expo are pre-owned. All of them come serviced, fully inspected to make sure that they're 100% authentic, just like we discussed when we look for little details like in the dial of this Ultra Slim. So if you have any questions, leave them below, uh, comment, call us here at Swiss Watch Expo. Go to SwissWatchExpo.com, find all of the Breguet. There's a little search bar, doesn't matter if you're on your mobile device or your laptop, you can search for Breguet and it's uh, gonna come up pretty quickly. But if you can't find exactly what you're looking for, give us a call, we'll help you through the search process.